Hi, welcome to Digital with Darren. I have a master's degree in physics at Imperial College London and graduated in 1997. I designed satellites at Matra Marconi Space and I spent 20 years as a quantitative trader on proprietary and flow trading desks in the city of London. Right, so in today's video, we're going to go through JavaScript arrays. JavaScript arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable. So let's get down to it. Okay, so we're getting started now. And we'll make the uh, JavaScript arrays um, file start. JavaScript arrays. And first of all, well, what does an array look like? And pretty much, if we want to set up an array, we might have an array of cars, for example. So we'd have cars equals two. And this is how we start declaring an array. And we put in some values for cars. So for example, we'd have a sob. We'd have Volvo. A BMW. We could have other cars too, but that's a good start. Now, an array is a special type of variable which can hold more than one value, and that's what we're actually seeing here. First value is a sub. Second one's Volvo, third one's BMW. The alternative option to arrays is storing single values. And we'll be storing them a bit like this where I'm highlighting here, where you can have like car number one and then car number two and then car number three. But what if you wanted to loop through your cars? Or what if you had, even worse, if you had 300 cars? That'd become a bit problematic, wouldn't it? So, the solution is the array. And when we declare our variable, we're declaring it um, on one line here, just like this. But we can actually split the declaration onto one, two, or three, or multiple lines. Um, so it's a bit agnostic like that, as long as um, as long as it's there. So, oops, like. Now we could stick Volvo down here, for example, as well. Text and so forth. And this is perfectly fine as well um, because everything within the braces is all one thing. So it's all, it's all acceptable. But anyway, let's go back and we'll stick it all back on one line because it's not too long. And we'll keep our code nice and short for now. Right. So we could break lines up, but we chose not to. Let's um, look at the next bit, which is accessing the elements of an array. And one can access the elements by referring to what's called the index number. So in the array that we've got here, we've actually got three items. And the first item is labeled as a, well, it would be a zero. This, this is a zeroth index. And this is the first number, and this is the second number. So if you want to call the first item, you're actually calling uh, value number zero in the list. So in this particular one, you'd, if you wanted to have name of the cards, you do name, and you wanted to take the first item, which is a Saab, it would be cars, or car in this particular car, and then you take the zeroth item. And if you console that to, log that to the console, we should get the value of Saab. And here we do, we see it down a bit below in the, uh, in the terminal. Um, and actually, uh, I forgot to mention one thing, but what normally, this is just nomenclature, but when you do um, name an array, sometimes you will do something like this and call it cars rather than car. And the reason why is that if you did want to call a single car afterwards, and this is something for a for loop, you might say for car in cars. So we'll keep it, we'll keep our array plural for now. 
And if we want to change an element of an array, so let's have a look at that. Um, change an element. Right. So for example, we might set um, cars zero, so the zero five term into a different um, a different car we don't want to solve anymore we want an opal and then again um, if we run this and we log it to the console our array will have changed so we should um, just do a little log log to the console and then stick in the value of um, cars and see what the cars array looks like And here we see now, at the bit in the bottom in the terminal, we've got Opal, Volvo, and BMW. Whereas when we started, we had Saab, Volvo, and BMW. And this is just basically all we've done is taken the zeroth element. Uh, likewise, we don't have to have changed the zeroth element. We could have changed the second item, which is a Volvo, which would be the first, which would be element number one. And we'll now be changing Volvo into Saab. And again, if we press the uh, F5 button to run it, We'll see how that goes. And there we go, we see Saab is um, unchanged and this time Volvo has been switched for Opal down here in the terminal. We'll change that back. And uh, let's look at the next part. Um, and so the next bit is titled Eraser Objects. And that's kind of like exactly what they are here. And, um, Arrays are a special type of object in JavaScript. The type of operator in JavaScript returns object for arrays. We use arrays and arrays use numbers to access their elements. So we've seen this just above, but again, there's another example here where we've got like a person and um, his first name is John and his second name is Doe and his, um, his age is 46 there. And um, if we go to person of index zero, it will return John. So we can actually copy this piece in here and stick it down into our code. And we could pull out person. We can log this to the console even, um, which would be the way to do it. We could get person. We'll take the zero item, which is the first element or for zero index which is the first element and it should print out John to the con to the terminal down below. Here we go. Now objects use names to access their members so um, whereas you've got an array that uses an index now we have an object that needs its um, needs a a string effectively or a member name so it's slightly different here and we could put the example in again um, this time we could have person but we'll, instead of just having person what we'll do is we'll call it person one and we'll define it like this and we'll take this person one and if we want to call this in javascript um, we would that we actually we're not going to call the index anymore so we're not going to if we want to get the john out of there we can't use the um, first element, so it's not like person one element zero, it's going to be person one dot. And then you're going to have a choice of, of the items that exist within it. So, for example, first name or dot last name, and so forth. And this will pull out the items. So let's actually do this, we'll log it to the console. So we log, and then inside it will pull out person one, and then we'll get his second name, so dot last name, like that, and just run it. And we see there we did pull out the dough, which is the second part, and that's the difference between um, object and an array in javascript so although arrays are objects um, objects themselves 
don't use indexing in the terms of numbers. They, use, they do their indexing or they access their names with their members. Right, if we move on to the next section, array elements can be objects. You can have an object in an array, you can have a function in an array, you can have an array in an array. So there's some examples here. Well, for example, we could like set an array, um, this array equals, and we can just declare some kind of array. And our first element, we could have a value like 100. And our second element, we could have either we could have a function or we could have anything else that we like to have in there. We could even have a um, person in there. So we take person and we could have a string. And if we actually um, printed this to the um, console, so then we just log it out and do this. All right, I just wonder what we'll actually get. And hit F5. Let's just see if we get anything in there, how it looks. And here we go, we see that we've got the 100, which is the first element. And the second element, we see we've got person, which is John Doe, bought it, and he's 46. So it's exactly the same as what we actually had here, and that's pulled into the array. So the, the array can just be an object of objects. And in fact, the, the third element here is hello world. We could actually even turn it into person1, for example, or add another element in here. And just stick in person one just like that and then if we run this one we'll see this time that we actually get an object as well as an array in our array and here we go so we've got the 100 that's our first of and look how it's a multi-lined it here in the terminal and the reason why is because it would have probably run out of space or gone over the end of the line so the so the the computer's done it for us the first element is the 100 the second element is the array that we put in the third element is that string that we put in which was hello world and the fourth element is the object itself and we can start accessing these by going down and we could call it like this array We'd have this array and if we wanted to get the um well if we wanted to pull out hello world for example in this one the first part would be zero then the next index would be one so the next index would be two so it'd just be two like that and we could put um our string is equal to this and we could just log that out to the console so we can do log and then put the s in there and then we'll just be pulling out the hello world and we can do that for all of them we can pull out the um we can pull out the object we can pull out the string we can pull out the the array and we can pull out the numbers we can pull out all of these different data types now something that is interesting is if we take our fourth element which is the person one here and that will be at index position number three because it's naught one two three um, if we do that, we will call out this array, and we'll take index number three. We can actually use this to get the objects. So we can actually get the objects out of person one. So person one, remember person one had a first name of John, a second name of Doe, and an age of um, 46. We could pull out any of these. So we could pull out his second name um, just in the same way. So we've got S, which is a string. Um, is this index three? which is person one, and then we can just do dot. And again, we can just do last name. And if it does work, then what will come out in the console, um, in the terminal uh, down below when we run the code, is we will actually see the doe, which is his last name. So just have a run and have a look and see, see if it goes. And here we go, we see the doe comes out there. 
So now we move on to array properties and methods. JavaScript arrays have lots of built-in array property and method, array properties and methods. And um, there are things that we can do, and there's a couple of popular ones here. Um, obviously, one of them is the, the length property. That's quite useful because it gives us the length of an array. And we could use the cars example, and we could literally take in um, we could take in this value. We, we could just set a new variable x, and we could say it is the cars dot length as such. And um, if we were to run this, so we can um, just log that value out to the console here, um, put in the value of x. We're expecting it again. We will scroll back up just to have a look. But cars was of length one, one, two, three. It's got three items in there. So we're expecting to get a value of three. And in fact, let's just put in um, a little bit of code here. Oh, not a bit of code, but a bit of text just to um, the cars length cars array. Put like this. And hit F5 just to run it. And we should get the length of the array if it's correct. And we do at the bottom here we see the cars length array and we get the value of three. There's also the sort function, which is um you know it's going to work in kind of like the same sort of way. So let's just do it. Y equal cars dot sort and the sort function is going to um, sort alphabetically effectively and here you see a little pop up here um function is to determine the order of elements it's expected to turn the negative value then you um it's going to do them in alphabetical order let's let's have a little print out of it and we'll have a look so in fact what do we expect to get we've got a sob first well it'll probably move bmw to the front because that starts with a b and then S become uh, in the alphabet um, occurs in front of V, S, T, U, V. So, just, so we'd expect to see a BMW, then a SARP, then a Volvo in that order if it does work. So we will log to the console the value of Y, which is um, this now sorted array. And we'll take a look and see what we get down below. And here we go, we see that the BMW has been different. Oh, sorry, of course. This is one of the things about the loose typing of JavaScript, but remember that we, um, somewhere in our code, when we were mucking around and changing, we changed cars zero to opal. So there was no Saab anymore. It turned into an, an opal. And that's the thing about this loose typing of JavaScript is overwriting. Um, we just gotta be a little bit careful with what we have. But nevertheless, what we did have is a sorting of the array. And we've got the BMW at the front then the Opal, then the Volvo. Now it's just with a cars.sort function. And just one extra bit, we could actually um, reverse the order of the um, sorting. So instead of going alphabetical, we could go reverse alphabetical. We could just, here we just use a, a function called reverse, so y.reverse, just like this. And then um, when we log that to the console, And we run it. We we'll see here that we get BMW Open and Volvo, and then afterwards the value of Y is in its sorted order, and this is the new Y, which is BMW Open and Volvo. Um, and then when we take Y and we do the dot reverse, we get the Volvo Open and BMW. So it's flipped over the array. And now we move on to first and last elements. So imagine that we take um, the following array, which is we can take this fruits array here. It's already pre-set up, so I'm just going to stick it in. We've got fruit, and we really know how to take the first elements. We like first, for example, first, our first element here is going to be equal to fruits. And we take the first element, which is a zeroth index, and we can log that to the console. Um, take the first and hit F5 and we'll see that we pull out a banana. There we go, we get banana at the end in our terminal. And in order to get the last index, we have to use um, a, a different sort of method here, one of the things that we've got. And we, we need to use the index length 
to do it. So he would set um, last. We just say it's equal to fruits. Now we need to take the length of the array here. So fruits. If you want to get the the last value and the last value here, we've got we've got one, two, three, four items there. So we want to get that in there, and let's let's just do it. We'll do the uh, fruits dot length. And that's going to be one item too many. And the reason why it's going to be one item too many is because although we've got number four here, we've got index of naught, one, two, three. So I'm just going to write that out just below just so that we see it. What we have here is our index numbers is naught, one, two, and three. But the actual items that we've got are one, two, three, and four. So the length of the array. The length is actually equal to is actually equal to number four. Of course, the length is equal to four. The actual index value is one lower than that. So let's just go and have a little run of it, um, and we'll log it to the console. So log to the console, and we'll stick in last, and hit the F five button to run it. And we should pull out mango. Oops, we've got an undefined. Ah, and of course, I forgot to stick in the minus one. That would be why. So let's just run that again. And there we go, we get mango at the end. And why um, why did it come up with the undefined? And the reason it came up with the undefined in that particular case was because um, we pulled out, we got the length and the length was four, and it went across and it looked at index and it went index number naught, index number one, index number two, index number three, and it was looking for a fourth index, but there was no fourth index. If there was a fourth index, it would have been here, but it doesn't exist. Um, there was only three, so it's actually, quite a useful error to uh, to get there. Remember, if you want to take the last element of the array, we've got to take the length of the array and subtract one from it. Now we move on to looping through the elements of an array. And what we have is if we've got that um, fruits array, so we've got the banana, apple, orange, and mango, um, and um, we know that its length is, we can pull its length by doing fruits.length, and so we can um, actually just take that value um, altogether, and so we do f, like len, for example, and that's equal to fruits.length, just like that, and um, that's going to take the um, value of 4, because it's um, banana, orange, apple, and mango, and um, we might want to just go through these one by one, and one method of doing this it's actually a better method, which is the um, which is the for each function. But um, one method of doing this is just a standard for loop. So we're just going to do one of the implement a standard for loop. We do for, and um, inside it will start with um, a value index of i equals zero. And remember from uh, the previous thing, we could say let i equals zero. Um, it doesn't really particularly matter in this case, but this is just a starting point. So for i equals zero, and then um, i less than um, f len. Now, um, we don't do less than or equals. We actually do less than because we don't want to have the same error um, where we had the previously, where we um, forget um, that the index or, or the array elements, they start at zero, so they're indexed at zero, one, two, and three. So although there's four elements in there, we never want to actually use the number four. The last element is four minus one, which is three. So we're going to use a less than sign and not a less than or equals to sign. And then we're just going to increment across, and we're just going to do i plus plus for the increment across. And then we're going to um, initiate a little code block. And inside the code block now, so we're going to be jumping through 
these values i equals 0, i equals 1, i equals 2 and i equals 3. And we'll just log to the console and we can take the fruits index, so fruits. And we take the um, ith element and the first element will be 0, so we'll be, we'll be logging out the banana. And then the next element will be number one. So fruits will be orange and the next element will be apple and so forth. So we just run that and have a look. And here you go, you see we pull out banana, mango, oops, sorry. Banana, orange, apple and mango. And that's basically um, how it's done. Okay, so we'll just quickly run through the for each method. Um, so the for each method and what we do here is we would take um, the fruit index so fruits and when we do dot for each for each open brackets and then inside the for each we would um, implement something it's, it's actually called an arrow function and it will look like this and what we're going to do is we're going to take the um for each fruit in fruit and this is why we pluralize um arrays as often as we can if we can do it so we're going to take for each fruit in fruits and we're then going to log to the console the fruit value And just to be clear, because we've got a whole bunch of things written down here at the moment, and what we'll do is we will um, we will just log something to the console, um, something like testing the for each method. We hit F5 and run it. Oops, for each is not a function, probably because I haven't capitalized the each there, I imagine. Here, yeah, five again. And this time it works, testing the for each method, uh, remembering to capitalize the E in each there. And what we do is we get the um, banana, orange, apple, and mango. And this is kind of like all done in one line. It's a bit more concise. Um, although there's something that's slightly complicated, which um, we haven't gone through at this point in time. And it's an arrow function. And it's a way of simplifying things in uh, JavaScript. So the last thing that we're going to go through is um, adding elements in arrays. And... Um, Yes, it's not too much of um, a difficult process here. What we've got to do is, and there's another keyword function, and basically the um, the keyword function is push. So we're just going to take our uh, fruits arrays again. So we get fruits, and then dot push. And then we're going to um, put in an extra piece of fruit. So we will use um, a lemon, for example. And that's going to add it to the end of the array. And let's actually log it to the console, otherwise we're not going to get anything there. So, um, fruits. And we'll just put log, this is the array with a lemon added. And we see here in the terminal below that we get banana, orange, apple, mango, and lemon. Now, there's loads of other functions as well. You can push, change, append, move around, and shift, and so forth. But um, pretty much we've covered um, all of the array types of things in JavaScript. And there's loads of features and things that we can do with them. It, it, it's hugely powerful. It's hugely powerful for programming every language has array capability and, and you know, that's one of the huge advantages of computing.
Importantly to know is really the difference in JavaScript between arrays and object. And in JavaScript, arrays are numbered indices. So this is quite important here, the, the bit in the green. And this is the differentiator. So arrays use numbered indices and objects use named indices. So they're very similar, but remember um, just slightly earlier in, in, the, in the lecture, um, we were using numbers indexes. So one, two, three, four, five, and this is how we were capturing our items in the arrays. And when we did pull up the object example, we would like using dot first name and then dot last name and dot age. So we were using names in the object cases. And when do we use arrays and when do we use objects? So JavaScript does not support associative arrays and this is um, referring to the indexing numbers. Um, also, it, it, it refers to not using names in arrays. So we can't do array dot something, that's an object in JavaScript. So any time that we want to have a descriptive thing, so for example, um, family and then brother dot name, sister dot name, so each of those items, brother, sister, they're not index numbers, so they're not like number one, number two. So all of those types of things, they're gonna be objects. And the items that we're always putting out uh, in the family, dot brother and family, dot sister and family, dot mother, they're always gonna be strings and not numbers. So in those particular cases, we're gonna use objects. And when you should use arrays is um, all things where it's just a list of numbers. So in our car example, we just had car one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's perfect for arrays. And an answering really is how to um, declare an array in JavaScript. And so if you want, do want to initiate an array, you just do like um, my new array equals n squared. And um, these brackets are enough to initiate an array. And then if we do um, log to the console is going to be a blank empty array but my new array and hit the f5 button we're going to get a blank empty array but that's um, initialized an array and now this item here this variable has been assigned an array value so thank you for watching my video i hope it was helpful and if you did like it then please press the thumbs up like button and also press the follow button below. I will have more programming videos and also some trading and math ones to come too. Thank you very much.